Welcome to a very special night of worship here at First Baptist Jacksonville. We're so thankful that you have uh, chosen to join us here in the room. We have several joining us on the live stream, and uh, we, you recognize this is not a normal night for us. It's a wonderful opportunity to hear some incredible music and to be encouraged to worship Jesus Christ, to be reminded of what he's done for us, and to celebrate the life we have in him. So our desire tonight is that you would uh, be able to enjoy a night of worship. It just says it's been billed. And it's a very special night because we're joining together with the musicians from First Baptist Church of Cleveland, Tennessee, who are with us here tonight. They've traveled a long way. They've already had a full day of ministry. Actually, they were here last night. They sang at the Orange Park Mall. And then this morning, they were in a couple of different churches in the area. They continue on uh, their, their missions trip uh, tomorrow and then Tuesday. So lots to look forward to for them, but tonight's going to be incredible. And there's a, there's a number of connections between the people uh, here from Cleveland and, and us here in Jacksonville, but one of them that I wanted to make you aware of, some of you already figured it out, but the worship pastor is Eric Yeldell, and his dad, Bill Yeldell, and Linda are over here. I think I see them through the dark there. If you could stand up and just let us recognize you and thank God for you. Yes. Bill is a pastor in the area and used to be on staff here at First Baptist Jacksonville. I understand the singles pastor. And there's, I've heard stories. There's a lot of marriages in the room because of the singles ministry that you presided over. So <laughs> a lot to be thankful for there as well. Let's pray together and ask God to do something special tonight. I know he's going to, but let's ask him, and then we are going to fill the night with music. Father, thank you so much for the gift of worship. There's nothing about this situation that works from the standpoint of human ability. A holy God should not be able to even be noticed by sinful man other than for judgment. And yet you have offered not just peace through your son, Jesus Christ, but the, the opportunity and invitation to draw near and to worship you. And so we want to do that tonight. We want to honor you. We want to extol your name and your virtues and your character. We want to rehearse the gospel themes. We want to be reminded of our need and your provision, that though we are sinners, you, Jesus, became sin for us, that we could be in this position here tonight, that we could love you, that we could know you, that we could walk with you, that we could worship you, and we could live a life for you. So tonight as we worship, as we go on a journey through music and the themes that these texts will reveal, would you draw us even nearer to yourself and let us delight to be in your presence and to live the life you've called us to live we love you. Let the words of our mouth and the meditations of our heart be fully pleasing to you. In Jesus' name, amen.
ashamed I'll never be ashamed This poor man cried And the Lord heard me And saved me from
Cleveland, one family under one roof from different states and different walks of life. And so real quick, can we do just something real quick, be a little fun? We love to meet you and, and we love to let you meet us. And so if you're with First Baptist Cleveland on the count of three, I want you to go ahead and say your name so everybody can get to know you a little bit. All right, ready? One, two, three. Perfect. Hey, I heard that. That's, that's good. All right, now it's your turn. All right, I want you to go ahead and, and share your name with us. You ready? One, two, three. It is so nice to meet all of you. So glad to be here with you, and uh, this is truly a full circle moment for, for me, having uh, been born into this church and God calling us up there to Cleveland, and uh, then now being back with you, and it's a delight, truly. And uh, I want to just fill you in. You're surrounded by people that you know, some that you don't, but all of us walk this life with Jesus together each with our hurts, with our hangups, with our situations. And I can tell you, we, we come from Cleveland as imperfect people that have come to worship a perfect God Amen. that loves us and then invites us into his presence and invites us to experience forgiveness and hope and joy and life through the cross of Jesus Christ and through his blood. And so we wanna just worship with you. And so we would love for you to go ahead and stand now as we sing together, power in the blood.
life and the hope that we have in him. He is sufficient for us and for our every need. Let's continue worshiping him, recognizing it's the power of Christ in us by his spirit that we live and breathe and move. Let's sing together, yet not I, but through Christ in me. What gift of grace is Jesus my Redeemer? There is no more, no friend now to begin. He is my joy, my righteousness and freedom. My steadfast love, my deep and boundless peace. To this I
Praise the Lord for his power in us, the hope of life. Amen. You may be seated as we continue to worship. Ephesians 1, actually Ephesians 2 and verse 1. It reminds us of the hope that we have in Jesus Christ for this life and for all eternity. It's a sober start because verse one says, and you were dead in your trespasses and sin. But then we pick up in verse four, it says, but God who is rich in mercy because of his great love that he had for us made us alive with Christ, even though we were dead in trespasses. You were saved by grace. He also raised us up with him and seated us with him in the heavens in Christ Jesus so that in the coming ages he might display the immeasurable riches of his grace through his kindness to us in Christ Jesus. For you are saved by grace through faith. And this is not from yourselves. It is God's gift, not from works so that no man can boast. And we're here tonight to declare God's goodness, his faithfulness, his love, and the hope that we have, not only for this life, but for all eternity and a hope that goes past the grave. We wanna share with you a song called Ain't No Grave because there is no grave that can separate us from the love of our Father and through the life that we have in him.
was crucified. seat. I'm going to let the choir have a seat for just a moment. Everybody needs to get their heart rate down a little bit. Don't want any medical emergencies here tonight. This has been already wonderful and uh, been a tremendous experience this afternoon to get together, recognize the like-mindedness towards worship, the delight in the same songs. And I just think it's a wonderful gift that First Baptist Cleveland would donate their choir and orchestra to First Baptist Jacksonville. I think it's just a nice gesture on their part. And we will be happy to send thank you notes back to Cleveland. We would love to keep you. There's obviously a lot of talent up here. We're thankful to be able to maintain the kind of uh, musical heritage we have at First Jacks. But to add that, uh, what's going on at Cleveland, we're thankful for this uh, very special event. There's a number of people uh, that make that happen. Of course, Eric, you've met. Uh, Jim Burleson, who's directing the choir, who was down here on the platform. There he is. Jim is uh, directing the choir and doing a great job with them. And then a friend of First Jack's, Tyler Williams, is back here on piano. So, yeah. Tyler's done some arranging for us. In fact, those of you who remember The Well, which was the last Passion Play we did, he arranged that for us. And then he also arranged 
a song that we're getting ready to sing for you uh, where this past Easter, and I wanted to explain it to you a little bit because it takes a little of explanation. We featured the hymn Amazing Grace this past Easter in recognition of the 250th anniversary of the hymn, and we wanted to share with the congregation the journey that the hymn has taken with regards to the tunes that have been associated with it. Hymn writers at the time wrote texts, and then they found a tune to go with it. And Amazing Grace has had a number of different tunes that it's been set to until it was wed to the most famous tune we now know. Uh, it's called New Britain, but the one that you know of as Amazing Grace is the one that came along in the 19th century. But the hymn was written in the 18th century, and there were a lot of tunes that were used for it. And this next uh, arrangement helps you see the way that the, the text journeyed through time. And so it's called Amazing Grace Through the Ages. Uh, and it was arranged by Tyler, and uh, we're very thankful to present it to you this evening to share the journey of this great hymn to us today here in, uh, in this evening of worship here in Jacksonville.
the Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. In green pastures, he makes me lie down. He restores my soul and leads me on for his name, for his great name. Sure.
that try to hide this precious blood that gave me life. But in three Yeah, I was ready to just walk off. I forget I'm supposed to speak here. <laughs> what, what more needs to be said than what you've just heard? It has been our delight. There's, there's another one coming. There's another one coming. It's been our delight to proclaim the simple, profound, old, old story that Jesus is alive. Yeah. And... Folks, I'm just telling you, it changes everything about your life. It changes everything about the way you think about life. Because when you think this is all there is, you are just getting unraveled day by day. But when you recognize that there's a time coming when we will stand in his presence and all will be done, and there'll be no tears, there'll be no sin, no sadness, no death, it will be life forevermore in the presence of God. That's what Jesus came to give us. That's why he came. But there are people in the room tonight, because this is what happens every time we gather, uh, who came for different reasons than this program has been presented. Someone may have told you this was a Taylor Swift concert. <laughs> and uh, you've been disappointed the whole night. But for whatever reason, you're here. And you are here because God decided you needed to be here Amen. to hear the message of Jesus Christ. Amen. And so don't leave here until you have received that message and applied it to your life. We are going to have an opportunity after the concert this evening to meet with people who need to understand this story better and how it applies to their own life. How can you know the life that we've been singing about? You see the expression and the passion that's going on in the choir loft. This is not manufactured. These are not people who just get stirred up over anything. These are people who have recognized that they once were sinners and now are saved. They once, yeah. Once lost, now found. Once blind, and now they see. And it is their great desire, I know, because I've worked with them all afternoon. It's they, their great desire that everyone here sees the same thing they see. The beauty of Jesus Christ and the gift of life that he offers. I'm going to pray before our final song, but I want to ask you to please respond tonight. Whether you're here in the room or you're watching online, please reach out to us here at First Jack's. You can do so by an email or a text message or meeting us here at the front or meeting us at a, a guest station out in the lobby at Next Step Station's. We want to serve you by telling you the good news that you can have this life too. Amen. So let's pray. Father, thank you for the gift of the gospel story set to music. Thank you for the gift of being able to proclaim that he's alive 
and that by this blood we can be cleansed from our sin. And for those within the sound of my voice who are living in the shame of their sin and under the condemnation of their willful rebellion, there's hope. There's hope today. There might not be tomorrow, but there is today because Jesus has extended his gift, his free gift of salvation. And I pray that those who need it would respond to it. And I pray that those who have received it and are walking in it would be deepened in their faith and admire more profoundly the gift of grace that is theirs. Forgiveness, being made free. What a precious gift freedom is. We know how to celebrate freedom in this country, but you offered something far greater than what we recognize in America. You offered a freedom that is beyond anything we could imagine politically. You offered a freedom of life. You offered abundant life, Jesus, and we're jealous that all would have it. So would you please grant it tonight, and would you please allow us all to be more faithful representatives of the things we've been singing about this evening. In Jesus' name, amen. Now I'm walking free, I've got the victory. 